you are no longer married and you're thinking about getting your next partner. But wait, don't do it just yet. Your success rate will increase if you do these next steps. Welcome to the show, Carrie. Let's talk about dating after divorce. So Carrie, here's the thing. I have no scientific data to prove what I'm supposed to tell you, but 87.4% <laughs> of everybody who dates after divorce is not ready for that first date. Probably. It may be 99.9, <laughs> but I'm just lowering it. I have no scientific proof. But your first date is, I mean, I'm gonna, I hate using the word never, or maybe there's one success story out there that the first date was the right date. I, I think I've heard of one. Most people aren't ready. And the person they're probably dating isn't ready. And between the two of you, that's a problem. Could be. <laughs> you don't like controversy as much as I do. I can tell you're, you're soft on it. But you know that's You've met people and you've been on dates that you've walked away and you're like, what are they doing, baby? Sure, yeah. Right? Yeah. How was your first date? <laughs> I mean, I wasn't really ready. I thought I was ready, but I wasn't really. But it's okay. You have to you have to jump in the pool at some point. You just have to. I mean, and yeah, I had taken years and years and years, right? So I had done a ton of work. I don't think it was a matter of like I hadn't done enough work. It's just like if you hadn't dated since you were in high school, you know, it's just different. I feel like you just you have to kind of learn. Okay, I agree. That's okay. I didn't think we were going to start here, but let's start with this. Okay. I agree. I remember people saying, you're not ready to date, don't date, what you don't rate. And my argument was, how does a muscle grow unless you exercise it? Exactly. Yeah. But here's what I would also say. Mm -hmm. Know that you're just growing your muscle. Meaning, don't, you know, there are people who act like and or think that they're really looking for their forever partner. And the reality is, no, you're getting back out there. You're meeting some people. Maybe you'll meet somebody and maybe it'll work or maybe it won't. But there's a difference between having a dating social life and truly doing the things that would find the next right partner. I think there's a big nuance difference. There is a big difference there. Yeah, Yeah, I think as believers... That we should be dating intentionally, right? It shouldn't just be, well, I'm just doing this socially just to have fun. It's like you should be doing that intentionally to be like finding your next spouse. I'm going to debate that. Okay. I think you're right in general. I mean, I, I think the principle of what you're saying is right. I'm not sure I would die on the hill. That That's your only thing. Meaning I've met, I, it defines what... It depends what you mean by dating. I've met women of the opposite sex that I thought were great to hang out and I enjoyed their company. They probably weren't going to be my forever person. I didn't kick them out of my life because they weren't. Sure. That feels like dating with intentionality. It's like, I know people are like, once they know you're not their other, they cut you out of their life. Well, you don't need to do that. I mean, I've made some very dear friends through the process. Yeah. Like very dear friends. But it was very much like a, oh, We, you know, we vibe, this is great, but not really for like to be a spouse in the future. But you know what? Like, yeah, we can be friends, but that doesn't happen with everybody that you go out on a date with. A hundred percent. It just doesn't. Sometimes you know, you know. Yeah. But sometimes it just happens, you know? I mean, I, I have uh, a friend, her, the very first guy that she went out with, I mean, they hit it off and they've been married for years now. Amazing couple. So right. I think it looks different for every single person. I think it does. I, it's funny, though. I had this debate with a girl one time. We were friends. And she said, I never date anybody who on the app says, look, something casual. They all, no, they, I don't They just want sex. I think you're, no. you're saying this. Okay. It might have been me. <laughs> but here's my argument. Oh, no. I, it, you both do. Now I've said it. Here's my argument. If you want to date somebody who's being truthful... And they're telling you, I am not ready for something too serious, but I just need out there because they want to exercise their muscle. And they're being honest about it. They get penalized. So then the guy's like, well, I guess I got to put looking for a long-term relationship when they're really not ready. And then you get cold. Oh, my gosh, that guy's not ready. It's like, I tried to tell you. But if he's not ready, he shouldn't be out doing that. 
Just as a woman, I think if you she's not me, ready. You exercise your muscles. You literally just said that, that people need to go out and exercise their muscles. So what's the difference between exercising and not being ready? Like, I don't understand. Mm. How can you exercise? I mean, if you are dating knowing, I I am not in a place where I could be in a committed long-term relationship that could maybe lead to marriage, then what do you, why are you dating? From a Christian perspective, uh-huh. I understand the world sees that completely different. We are talking about Christian dating, right? Yeah. That's what we're talking about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, boy, I I don't know. I got I to gotta chew on that a little bit more. I feel like, yeah, once again, well, at least as a woman, lots of dating. As a woman, I think that's, if you're doing that or you you see that a man is like, no, I don't want anything serious. I don't want a committed relationship or anything. I just want to have fun. And you go into that. I think that you're stepping into a situation where you, you're probably going to get hurt. Probably. Okay. I, I buy that. Here's the, another way I like to word that I, in the past. Okay. So don't get mad at me. I didn't do it yesterday. Give me some grace. But years before, I know I've been on a dating site and I've told the person, hey, I'm busy with my life. Mm -hmm. I've got these things coming up on the horizon. I'm in therapy right now working on this thing. Great. Okay. What do you want to date? You don't know what you don't know whether it's going to go. It's light. Who knows? You may meet your person and it turns into something. But I was honest and upfront that, and you were worried, well, if you're not serious, well, like, what does that mean? Because I'm not saying it's not possible to build a relationship, but I'm giving some red flags that this is more casual. Mm-hmm. And if you want a nice guy to go to some concerts with and some dinners and hang out and have fun, I'm your huckleberry. Sure. But I wouldn't say I was but, serious, but then I wouldn't okay. say I was not serious. Okay. Does that make sense? Like, I think sense. it's in the middle of what we're saying. Okay. I thought that was a safe thing. and I, I took pride that I was always honest. I'm glad you're honest. That's good. But you're telling me that you, I shouldn't do that. That I, In your mind, I'm not serious enough, so I shouldn't be out there. I, I think that if we want to be considerate and kind and respectful to the other person. Who and, that's not where they are. Because what if I, cause I met women who said, I'm in the same boat. A little too busy with my career right now, but I don't want to sit at home. So let's get together. And we've had a great little couple month relationship. Okay, well, I guess if that's a mutual thing. <laughs> well, you're saying as a Christian, I shouldn't do that. I don't think that's the best way to, to go about okay. it. If you're wanting to be respectful of the other person and, and leave them better than you found them and not hurt them. Right. So, cause there's always that. somebody I think that's going to get more attached and feelings start right. to happen and your heart gets involved and, and like, you don't want to walk into something where, you know, well, eh, it's just kind of like, eh, whatever, who cares, you know, who knows what's going to happen. And yeah. then maybe you hurt them in the process. Yeah. So. I agree with that, which is why I try to look for like-minded people, because they're like, if you're in the same boat and I'm in the same boat, that's going to work. If yeah. one person trying to be in, well, then I would naturally say, oh, I can tell. Yeah. I don't, don't even try the Todd thing because sure. it's not going to work. But not all men will do that. No, I mean, and not I'm, all I'm women an will do that. And be... person, <laughs> yeah, not everybody is that clear. Yeah, yeah. Well, you have yeah. to be a good communicator. Yeah. And I thought I did it. And well. honest. And honest. <laughs> and I've actually, unfortunately, I've actually had to break up from, from relationships where mm-hmm. they leaned in way fast and I was like, don't, don't, I'm warning you don't. And they did. And I was like, yeah, you shouldn't have. <laughs> so I had to move on. That's another topic for another day. But yeah. So finding your other partner. So at first we're talking about just the dating apps and when to do it. We've already had an episode of becoming the new you. And we're assuming you've listened to that episode because until you're healthy, you're not going to be able to find mm-hmm. the next healthy mm-hmm. person. So that's first steps to finding your your partner. Here's what I want your thoughts on of this nuance. Let's talk a little bit about dating apps, but I don't want to have traditional dating app talk. I want to say this. I want to have the comparison of not between the kind of apps, just the phenomenon that we live in a world where we can be very isolated. Mm-hmm. We can work from home. We're in our cars a lot. Church went virtual through COVID, which we were both single during COVID. Um, 
we've lost the art of human interaction. And without it, you sort of need the apps because the apps, I've met people I would have never, ever met in my life if it wasn't for sure. those dang apps. Yeah, it's a great tool. It's a great I tool. I think it's a tool in your tool belt. I think that being out in public and being friendly and, you know, I know that's, we don't really talk to strangers much anymore, but learning the art of doing that again yeah. and being out and being social. But also if you want to use the app, use an app, you know what I mean? Like right. use it as a tool, not necessarily like an end all be all. Yeah. Agreed. And, and it comes with its curses and the ghosting and the start stops, the whole, forget all that, but sure, it's, it's a but mess. It, it could be, it, yeah. can be, can it can be. also be really great. I think you I can agree. meet really awesome people on it. I think that you could meet a guy at a friend. She met a guy at Trader Joe's. Yeah. You know, he got her number and stuff, and then he ghosted her. So, I mean. <laughs> you can get ghosted You anyway. can get ghosted anywhere, anyway, yeah, right? Fair. So, yeah. But isn't it interesting? I'm not a bar person. No, it doesn't mean I've been in a thousand bars, so let's don't pretend I'm lying. I've been in bars yeah. my whole life. I've been so, in a bar, too. Yeah, yeah. So, everybody yeah. be quiet about me being a hypocrite. But I'm not a bar person. Right, I don't go hang out at a bar. I don't have my spot. I don't like having a couple of drinks every day. Like I don't go to bars. Mm-hmm. But I got to tell you, I don't think, and I'm an outgoing person. I don't think I'd ever ever go up and talk to somebody in a bar. Why? Oh my gosh, I feel like a creep. I feel like a bar person. Like I'm not a, a pickup line guy. Yeah. I will almost never. Well, then I know women who are like. Oh, I don't meet anybody online and nobody comes and talks to me. I go, well, one, you're on your phone. Two, you're, you're not engaging. And then she goes, what they do, they're creeps. So I'm like, that's why I don't go talk to you. And then and like, oh, you want to meet somebody organically. And then you create a world where we all go to the gym with our earphones on. I don't. I specifically don't. See, genius. Mm-hmm. And I've met a lot of people, not like guys. Well, I mean, I know guys there, but yeah. like I've started to... Like get to know the people because you're inviting the, the vibes that I'm approachable. Yeah, you can because talk I'm not to me. doing this with yeah. earphones on. Yeah, talk to eighty year olds to twenty year olds. Okay. So I know their names. You know, so you do have to be. I think you have to be intentional about how you're doing all this. I totally agree. And the other thing too is we got to get over the idea that everybody talks to you is trying to marry you or sleep with you. Mm-hmm. Like I, I. The other day, I'm going to admit something that's horrible. That's not horrible. Sort of. I was walking in our grocery store, and we live in, a, in an affluent area of America. We're not in Beverly Hills, but we are. Mm-hmm. Everybody around here makes six figures, and they live in big houses. Mm-hmm. We live in that area. And with more money comes more disposable income, which means you have... I'm going to use the word better hair, better wardrobe, better whatever. And then people do put their money into their bodies. Okay. I'm not saying these, I'm no, not saying sure. these are bad or good. It's fact. It's a fact. Sure. A lot more Botox in this county. Than <laughs> there is. Just saying. There is. So I saw this woman and I'm going to say she had gone what I would call past normal enhancements in many areas of her body. <laughs> And she dressed as if, well, I need, everybody needs to know all the things that I've done. And so when you walk by, you can't, this, she was tall, the way she, there's no way you can't double take. And I double taked. And then I, you know, my, I'm just a thinker. So I was just thinking, well, who's her husband? What, how does this work? Why? I think she has a wedding ring. I'm not sure. But I was cognizant of her the whole time I was at the grocery store. Well, every time she'd be down an aisle, I would see men double back in the aisle, stop their carts when they're like, like she was the talk That's so funny. of the grocery yeah. store Good for that for 30 her. minutes. Yeah. Right. Okay. The whole reason I'm telling you, that was the backstory. Okay. Here's the reason I'm telling you this. We both ended up in the same area of um, sports drinks or whatever, like whatever those are. And I remember thinking, you're not my type. If you're married, I wouldn't want to talk to you. Like, I don't talk. If I see a ring, right. you're dead to yeah. me. Yeah. I don't talk to any married person, woman. I just don't. It's just. Yeah. Not a good my, idea. My trauma and my lines, they're mine. Yeah. I don't talk to married women. But we crisscrossed. And, oh, could you hand me that? I'm sorry I'm in your way. We ended up talking for 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. Nicest woman in the world. Kind, smart. 
artic- everything I thought about her when I saw her, gone when she started talking. I still wonder why she's the way she is when I forget that. But to your point, when you put a wall up, you miss opportunities. Mm -hmm. And I met a beautiful, and I use that inside beautiful person Mm -hmm. because I opened up my mind to talk. And I just feel like I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not, I don't want to blame women, but I feel like y'all are the gatekeepers. You put off a vibe. We right? are the people say, then. people say, well, I have a resting bitch face. Well, then get rid of it. Get rid of it. Because if that's what's, I don't know why anybody talks to me. Well, because you're literally putting <laughs> off negative energy that you don't want anybody to talk to you. So we don't. And the people who do are people who don't read social cues. And then you're like, everybody comes up and he's a jerk. Well, yeah, because you, who's going to go through that wall but an idiot? Mm-hmm. But the nice guy. Who you probably would like today, mm-hmm. he won't go through it. He won't. And we'll be shy because we're not going to try. Well, I personally just think that's where men and women both, we got to like step it up a little bit, right? Yeah. As women, we need to be more friendly and approachable. And for the men, hopefully they can, you know. Be aggressors and or not aggressors. Not aggressors, pursuers. pursuers. How about that? <laughs> that's a much better word. Really better. Right? Way and better. like take a chance. So I think that there's yeah. a place for both to level up. Okay. I know. Uh, this is part of the reason I want to have this conversation. I think this conversation can go a hundred different ways and we may literally split this up into multiple episodes. But I want to start with this. Since we're on the gender thing, let's dive right into that and make it the rest of this podcast if possible. You, One of the things that really intrigued me about you and our friendship and our conversations is you said you sort of did a deep dive into your femininity mm-hmm. and you did a deep dive into role, role playing. Well, I think, not role, yeah, role playing. Like, what is role? Not, 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 yeah, not in the way. Not role playing. Finding, identifying, and living in your God wired, God called gender assignments. There you go. Right? <laughs> so talk, let's talk a little bit about that. Like, mm-hmm. where, why did you flip the switch? What are we even talking about here? Like, what's, mm. what do you mean, like, women? I mean, because women are women, men are men, men are men, women are women. And the Bible doesn't, it's not like we have a whole verse like, hey, not verse, chapters, books. Right. Well, women, I want right. you to read this. Men, I want you to read this. 90% of the Bible, 98% of the Bible is to all of us. Mm-hmm. But there are some nuances about our wiring that may or may not be in the Bible, but at least the truth is the truth. So all truth is God's truth, right? Mm-hmm. So explain a little bit about what... Mm-hmm gender role and how your world changed when you started living into that. Yeah. I mean, I can only speak from my experience, right? I'm not an expert. Yeah. Yeah, People write books on this topic. Yeah. Yeah. I just read the books. You just read the books. (laughs) You read the back cover. And just kind of walked through my own experience. But like as a single mom and owning my own business and having, you know, to run a household and things like that, you know, like I have, I, on day to day, I have to be kind of in that, um, some people will call it like that boss babe. I don't really love that term at all, but mm-hmm. like role or the, like, I can go out and I can do things and I can conquer things and I can get it done. Right. Mm-hmm. Which I can, but that's not very inviting, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To to men in general, yeah. right? If yeah. you're gonna if you wanna attract someone that wants to be like a leader, right? And things like that. So um I have learned how to like shift out of that, right? And to um With, show up in the right time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, day to day when I'm working, I'm working, doing You're my independent. thing. Independent. I'm doing my thing. But then, like, if I'm talking to a man, if I am going on a date with a man, things like that, learning how to lean back and, like, let them help. Sh- shift let into them... a more traditionally feminine role. Yes. And get out of your uh, boss. I'm the boss. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what's Captain really nice? Myself. I don't want to be in charge. Right. I don't. And... A man, if you're going to, you know, date a man, marry a man, like the the man wants to be in charge, right? In a good, healthy way, right? Yeah. And so like to learn to be able to shift into that and to let them do that, even I've even practiced with like, I'm at a store and a man opens the door for me, letting him do that, yeah. letting him do that and saying thank and you. And being grateful, not put out or... Totally. Or... Uh, 
Oh, no. why wow, he's just doing that because all the things that we hear from no. feminism. If Maybe you will. he just wants to be kind. That's right. You know, he's probably a good guy. He just want to open the door for you. That's you know what I mean? I had, I was w- walking into the gym one day, and I'll never forget this guy. I'm walking. And there's a guy, I mean, he's at least 10 paces behind me. Okay. And he goes, hey, 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 don't you stop for a second. And I turned back and I was like, what? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. He goes, no, no, no I'm going to open the door for you. Yeah. And I was like, thank you so much. That was so sweet of you. You didn't have to do that. No, and I've never really talked to him again. I see him at the gym. We wave. But, like, that was super kind. So right. that's just one example. But just, like, being able to, like lean back the best way i can describe it is just leaning back you know and if a guy asks you out let him ask you out let him plan in yeah and don't, just let don't him take manipulate. care like it's so easy take charge don't take charge don't take charge you know and it's not it's not that i can't it's not that i don't run my own business it's you know but like there's also a beauty between like male and female and how god created us and how we can really work well together yeah and that's not to say that I'm remarried or anything like that. Right, it's just right. something I have been learning. I've been reading yeah. a lot of books on, talking to girlfriends about. Like, I have one girlfriend in particular that's single. And so we've been able to go on this journey together. And, like, she'll even text me some days and be like, oh, my gosh, I practiced today. And, like, I let a guy just in public, like, just, just help me out. Just do something for me, you know? Awesome. And then being thankful. And it's... It doesn't mean you're playing damsel in distress. No. No, yeah, we're not, not manipulative in any no, way. No, 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 no. Yeah, we're not no. saying that. No. Yeah. No. I, I find it interesting. I, I dated a girl, and, and what I think to say applies both ways. I don't think it's a one way. But it bothered me that we got in the car and we we're trying to park. She's like, oh, park mm-hmm. here. Right. Park there. Almost grabbed the steering That's wheel. That's a great example. Almost grabbed the steering wheel just, because she wanted to park somewhere. And I'm like, sit back. Sit and back. And if you drive, but guess what? I know there's a men women role, but my point was, if you're driving, I'm going to sit back because you're driving, and I'm going to honor that. And oh. my point, honor that I'm driving. Yeah, I know you know how to park your car. Got it. But not today, Satan. Like we don't have to do that. You know what? Dating's a lot more fun when you do that, isn't it? It's a lot more. Well, fun. you learn more about the other person when you rely on them yes. to do something. Yes. Make a plan. Mm-hmm. Make a date. Mm-hmm. Follow through versus just eh. Yeah. And if they don't follow through, if they don't make a date, then they're like, oh, okay, you're just not the guy for me. You're, yeah, you're, hey, not, was, you're not that interested, are you? Yeah. Like, okay, cool. I'll just move on. Okay. So give me some other ways femininity, however you say that word, um, shows up. Like, what do you mean? It's not just door openings. No. Yeah. And no. maybe not just plans, but what are we talking about in the role of dating? Yeah, in the role of dating. What is, how does, Where does this femininity show up, or when did you learn how to turn what off? Let's take a quick break. Are you making the tough decision about divorce? Or in the middle of your recovery? Well, I have a few books you will want to read. Don't navigate one of the hardest journeys you will face without a roadmap. Visit toddturner.com slash books to find the helpful guide you can keep with you during this time of decisions and healing. toddturner.com slash books. Now back to the program. Mm. I mean, it was just some, you know, some books I read, some people I was like following on Instagram that, that teach this type of stuff. But I would say in the role of dating, like, let, let the man pursue you, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's also a great indicator. Like if he can't follow through and reach out to you and ask you out, make a plan. Like that's a good indicator of whether or not he'd be a good leader. Yeah. Right. Leader, provider. Provider. Um, was yeah. really interested in you and wanted to know about you. Wouldn't yeah. he ask good questions and yeah. at, at a date? Yeah. Like, yeah. You wouldn't have to drag crap. Out. If you have to drag something out and during the honeymoon, period, this is what he's supposed to be on his best behavior. If a guy, <laughs> if you got to pull teeth yeah. then, imagine married and he's sitting on the couch watching TV. Sure. Like, yeah. come on, don't yeah. date guys who can't communicate ladies. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, and letting them, I don't know. I think there's just a really sweet way to let them pursue. And then you, um, you know, receive that. And then you reciprocate some, but you don't, you don't lead it. You don't drive it, yeah. you know, yeah. and it makes yeah. it a lot more fun and so much easier. And it's also stressful. I'm assuming when you're not in charge, because we live in a make, if you want it done, get it done attitude. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and the economy of just how Americans are wired. 
we're, we're go-getters. So when you let other people be in charge, sometimes you get disappointed because you're like, well, nobody's, you're fishing, ain't nobody fishing. And you have to live with that. Yeah, but it's an easy way to see if somebody's for you, yeah. right? And I've even heard from men where they've said, golly, I dated this girl. And it was like, she just did so much for me all the time. And she was planning everything, you know? And he, he I mean, I've talked to a couple yeah. different people who have said like, Golly, it was just frustrating. Like, that's not the type of woman I want to be with. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so it's interesting if this is new to you, this is a new topic. Like, yeah. just look up, like, biblical femininity or femininity in dating, yeah. something like that. Um, that's different than feminism, you know? Yeah. Uh, very different. <laughs> very, uh, <laughs> Sort of, sort of the opposite, I yeah. would say. But there's yeah. a lot of good good articles out there, you know, okay. good things, good resources and stuff yeah, like I that. Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, I know we're all wired different. We have different personalities. We have different history. We have different trauma. I get it. There's a lot of nuances. But in general, I would say I have really come to appreciate femininity. Like, I've... Did not realize mm. how much I like a woman to look like a woman, smell like a woman, yeah. be a woman, and it doesn't mean that I need to save her. Or I, I don't. Mm. I'm not that far. I'm. No. I like a good. I think the Bible, unfortunately, a lot of churches teach the roles of men and women incorrectly. A little bit, right? A little bit. We are equal, by the way. People, the man is a man is not over a, a husband is over a wife. People, if you're listening. Take notes. <laughs> a husband has a role and a wife has a role. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean a man is equal or above a woman either. Because that, that happens that women get, get a divorce or she'll be single. And men, some churches say, well, you're a man. You're over her. Like, you ain't over her. <laughs> her dad's over her. Right. Nobody's over her. Right. She's over herself because her oh, covering God's left. God's taking care of you. Yeah, yeah, God's over her, yeah. but not yeah. you because you are a man. Like so many men get that wrong. Like, well, mm -hmm. men ought to be this kind of leader. No, nah, mm -hmm. that's not biblical mm -hmm. at all. But I'm talking about this idea of like, I want, I don't need me with boobs. Does that make sense? <laughs> no, I, you know what it's I mean. It's true. You're not looking for a man to marry. I'm not looking for a man with boobs. I'm looking for a female. Right. Who's all female. Yeah. I don't understand y'all in a thousand other ways, but I do love and appreciate sure. the look like, smell like, act like, and I'm going to use the word serve, and I don't mean serve me, I mean, but yeah. behave in, in that yeah. service because you are why Y'all are nesters. Mm -hmm. I see it when I date women. I can just see that nesting. Yeah. Come out. I'm not wired that way. We I are, appreciate it. Yeah, we are designed to like take care right and nurture and mm -hmm. stuff like that but i think that sometimes we can carry that over into like dating where it's like oh, i'm gonna take care of this man i'm right. sorry he's a man that's right yeah he can that's take right. care of himself you can bring some really wonderful things to the table but you you know yeah. you don't need to take care of him. does that make sense oh yeah and or change because i or think change. yeah because they both play really close to one another right of like right. oh well i can save that person i know what to do to mm. help them a little bit more. It's like, eh, that's not your role. See, I think that is a nuance here that's a really, really tough one. Is when in a relationship is someone this, a spiritual leader? Mm -hmm. Or you get into these roles where like, we're dating. So like certain of these roles show up too early and there's danger in it. And there's also danger they show up too late. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and I, I'll give you one example. Prayer. I used to pray before my first dates. Mm -hmm. I no longer do that because... Like with them? With them. At the beginning of the date. That's right. The first date. First okay. meal comes through there. I would pray. You wouldn't pray before the meal? I'd pray before the meal. Oh, still the meal. Yeah. Oh. No, no, I don't do it anymore. Hmm. Because it, it to me, the time was off. Meaning by doing that, I had... Oh, this sounds cocky. This sounds cocky. Just please give me some grace with this. I would have women just like fall in love quick because they're like, oh, a spiritual leader. There's one right in front of me. I'm going to catch him. No one's ever prayed with me before. Oh, no. Like this is now I became like, here's the new bar. And mm. I thought, I just, I like, I'm already leaving the meeting thing. Yeah, this isn't my person. And they're like, this is my person. Mm. And so I realized mm. that 
it was too early to bring to the game. Interesting. Yeah, it really yeah. was. I can yeah. name way too many times it failed. Yeah. And no times it benefited. Yeah. And I thought I, it felt like a weapon, and I decided <laughs> I'm not going to use that <laughs> weapon. Yeah, I mean, I think if I was on a date and the man didn't pray before, just for the meal, so just saying, the meal, we can't win, by the way. To me. <laughs> To me, that would be like, huh, okay, that's kind of interesting that he didn't pray. Does he never pray before meals? Okay. Here's how I solved that problem. I would talk about prayer, and I would just say, I don't pray before meals. Like, I would just say it because, to me, that's very ritualistic. Meaning, uh-huh. to, I don't like praying before meals because, to me, it's like <laughs> okay. it's like a ritual. It's like, I, I'd, I'd rather thank God but when I don't have to thank you for food. Like, I don't know. To me, I, I'd, I'd rather pray quietly in the corner and pray there than to pray in front of everybody yeah, where it's like, fine. oh, look, we are praying. Like, we're praying for the meal. That's what we do. And I'm like, eh, I don't like it. But see, to your point, damn if you do, damn if you don't. If you, if you don't, you're in trouble. If you do, it, it's Well, neither one of problems. us have all the answers. We don't. We're just coming from personal I'm just here experience. to poke and say where where and when. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I don't... And, and the other part about that, the same kind of topic, is when when do you say to a person... Is it day three? Is it day five? Is it day ten? Where in the relationship you're like, I see this. I would, I would be under this person. Meaning, so there's a, a woman I know. She says, when I go out on a date, I think the same thing with two different ramifications. Would I? Can I see myself under this person? Mm-hmm. She goes, I mean that spiritually and sexually. I mean it. Mm-hmm. Would I trust this man to be a leader that I could trust and partner with in our unique roles? Mm-hmm. And could I literally see myself falling in love? Mm-hmm. Am I attracted? Mm-hmm. Would I would it be would I have to force myself mm-hmm. to into this? You know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. And she goes, if you didn't bat a thousand, uh, no more dates. But then my argument, I thought, okay, I, I see that, I buy that. Not a bad little litmus test, I guess. But my my issue is like, when in the dating do you say, okay, I'm going to hit get into my role with a stranger? It's a stranger. You never know. You don't know them. How on date one you got to fall into a role? You can't. You can't. No, you just. When do you fall into it? I think that just takes time. I think you have to come with curiosity. You've got to ask lots of questions. You got to take time, time to get to time. know them. You know, and then over time, bringing in people, bringing in your circle, like your your people that are yeah. in your life, and I think kind of earlier than later, you know, because they can spot things you might not be right. seeing, you know, um, and then just being really prayerful about it until you figure out like, huh, do I trust this person enough to, you know, and it kind of too, I feel like as a woman, you can kind of see like, is this man even sort of leading this relationship, <laughs> or not doing not, that. It's not a relationship at the beginning, but like, is he even leading in the beginning? Is he, you know what I mean? Like, is, is he pers- like how how is this going? That's a really great indicator. Yeah, no, I totally agree. This topic is going to have to be cut into multiple episodes, but I, I want to end with this. When you say bring in friends, would you even say, well, I'll, I'll, for you, would you, when you meet your person mm-hmm. that you think's your person, let's say you've been dating months and you're in and you're, mm-hmm. this is your person, are you going to require this next marriage to go through marriage counseling? Yeah. 100%. Heck yeah. Okay. And even... Part of it's the test of that you have a person you pay to even look and say, is this a healthy relationship? Because there's there's growing close to one another, and then there's also you need a fresh set of eyes. And somebody could say, sure. yeah, that guy's really got a personality disorder that you're going to hate. Yeah, I would want to take all the steps. All the data and all the... Yeah, yeah, not go crazy, but yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, after what I've been through, yeah. I, I interviewed somebody the other day, and they were saying that they are very big believers that not only Christian counseling, but just therapy, counseling, counseling. Because mm-hmm. their argument is that at best you get out of church counseling is um, love languages and biblical roles. Yeah, at yeah, be- yeah, yeah, yeah. At best. Yeah. And her argument, she goes, I'm a professional counselor. Like, sort of like you are with with food. Mm-hmm. She's this way with, she goes, if you don't know your attachment style. Yeah. And you don't understand the ramifications of your attachment style. You have a very good chance of picking the wrong person. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you're going to pick somebody that fits your attachment style. And they're going to pick somebody that fits theirs. And you may be with the totally wrong person and you don't even know it. So she's like, I recommend people get counseling. So she goes, I normally fix the problem when they're in a marriage crisis. 
and then I have to unearth it, and then we got to work through it harder. If you would have caught it on the front side, you might have saved yourself all this problem. Mm-hmm. Well, you're, you're never going to get that in church, ever. Name me a pastor who has all that, those degrees and studies. Well, no, usually they don't. So you they need don't. to go, yeah, yeah. Got to go outside. Well. Sure. Which sounds like a lot of work. Like, when do you do that? After you fall in love and then you go over like this. That's the problem with love. Once you're in love with somebody and then you're like, oh, well, we have different attached styles. Oh, too bad. We'll work through it. I love them. So when do you go put in the work to realize I really shouldn't even be in this relationship? I think that's. That just comes at the beginning when you have to have so much discernment and you have to be like looping other people in your life in on what's right. going on. You don't walk through all this by yourself. You don't. Because that's when you can end up with like more heartbreak. Right. And if you're listening to this, you're probably divorced. And you've probably been through a lot of heartbreak. So do your due diligence to be discerning, to be prayerful, to bring other people in. So and trust can, your friends. And trust your friends, yeah, so you can walk through dating wisely so that it can be fun. Right. You know, it's not always going to work out, but, you know, like hopefully even at the end with some of them, like they do become friends. It happens. Right. It happens. And they, they've they helped you flex those muscles, right? right, and learn more things to help you get ready for the next person. Right. So, 100%. All right, more to come. Because you, you can't find your forever person without finding yourself. And very rarely are those cases where you walk in, right, there's my person. It happens. It happens. It does happen. But more often than not, it's a lot of work to find the person that you're going to vibe with and vibe. Yeah. And then make that next commitment. And it just doesn't happen. by dr- get on an app, swiping and hoping. It's work. It's work, but it can be fun. It can be fun. And there's hope. Yeah, There's hope. That's right. Don't give up hope. (laughs) All right. Blessings. Thank you for listening to the Unyoked Podcast with me, Todd Turner. Can I ask you a favor? Two, actually. First, rating and reviewing this podcast positively goes a long way to help others find this resource. I get told constantly, I wish I knew of this podcast earlier. Well, you can make that happen with just a simple rating on the podcast app you're listening to right now. Also, when you're done with that, please go to toddturner.com slash books and purchase, gift, and review the resources that we have available for those needing help in their divorce journey. It's a lot easier handing somebody a book sometimes than handing them a podcast. And your Amazon reviews really help get our books higher on the chart for others to find. toddturner.com slash books. Thanks so much. And please, really, just review the podcast really quick. Thank you.